Hi there, this is James Swanick, and you're listening to the Alcohol Free Lifestyle Podcast, where you learn how to take back control over alcohol and live a life of health, wealth, love, and happiness. We've got another reader question here on the Alcohol Free Lifestyle Podcast. This question comes from Matt Proud, uh, and Matt is in the 30 Day No Alcohol Challenge Facebook group. And he posted this question inside of that group. Matt asks, James, a lot of the positive habits and methods for quitting drinking are based around things that you can control in your own life, sleep, diet, exercise, etc. My experience with two little kids is that when they come into your life, they take away some of that control, disrupting your sleep, interrupting your routines, and adding an extra element of stress in balancing everything. Often the sheer shock of fatherhood, motherhood alone can be a trigger for some people to use alcohol to cope. Do you have any specific guidance or tactics targeted at new parents or is the advice and methods still the same? Matt, thank you so much for your question. I am actually pretty well versed to speak on this uh, because I have a partner and uh, she has a six-year-old son And uh, I guess you could say I've been a de facto father now for some months, uh, living in the same home, uh, and all of a sudden parenthood has been thrust upon me, or rather I've chosen to step into uh, parenthood. And so it's amazing (laughs) how distracting a six-year-old can be when you have a home office, especially with COVID-19 lockdown quarantine going on and Uh, there's no office to go to. Even if I did have an office, I don't really have an office. I always work from home anyway, but when you're sharing a home and all of a sudden now there is a partner and there is a child and the child wants to play with you and wants him to tackle you and, uh, or wants you to tackle him rather and kick the football and do all these kind of things while you're trying to put out the alcohol free lifestyle podcast and run the project 90 program and run the Swanee's blue light blocking glasses business and coaching business and do all these other things, uh, it can get a little bit stressful and hectic. So, Matt, I totally get you. Um, Here's the thing. Uh, You asked the question, do I have specific guidance or tactics around quitting drinking or or around alcohol use targeted at new parents? Or is the advice and methods still the same? Um, It's not a sexy answer. The answer is the advice and methods really are still the same. There's always going to be distraction. There's always going to be stress. There's always going to be anxiety. And even if you have the most perfect family life where your partner and your children uh, don't distract you and your child falls asleep on cue and never screams and doesn't throw toys out of the pram and always says, always does what you ask them to do, even if you have that perfect life scenario, you, are, you will still find things to be stressed and anxious about. It might not be with family. It might not be with the kids. It might be with something that's going on with work. It might be something to do with your health. It might be something to do with the state of the world's economy or whatever triggers you, like the, the, like relationship with your mum, like a whole bunch of stuff, anything and everything. There's always going to be excuses or reasons for you to justify having a drink to relieve yourself of stress and anxiety. And here's the thing. If you are looking at alcohol to relieve you of stress and anxiety, whether it comes from kids or family or, or, or elsewhere, then you still haven't quite got it. And that's okay because societal conditioning uh, has had you believe your entire adult life that alcohol is something desirable and something that relieves you of stress, is something that you drink to celebrate. And it's preposterous when you wake up and realize that you've been in a matrix the whole time because alcohol actually keeps you more stressed and more anxious It borrows joy from tomorrow and it creates temporary and illusionary feelings of relief or joy or pleasure. But it's not. It's keeping you stuck in a vicious, vicious cycle. It's actually perpetuating your stress and anxiety. Uh, Lots of different ways to reduce stress and anxiety, to handle stress and anxiety. Notice I'm not saying eliminate stress and anxiety because 
speaking from my own experience, I don't think it's possible for us to completely eliminate stress and anxiety. Uh, unless you're a Buddhist monk and you've been meditating for 20 something years, I, uh, as I understand it, they have eliminated it. I have not, uh, but I've reduced it. Uh, many ways to do that, including breathing, exercise, writing things that you're grateful for, uh, even just identifying that you are stressed and anxious. So rather than saying, I'm stressed and anxious, just even stopping and going, oh, I'm feeling stressed and anxious is enough for you to separate from that stress and anxiety and the stress and anxiety therefore starts to subside. I'll say that again, just in case um, I didn't explain it particularly well. Even the fact that you just stop for a second and go, wow, I am feeling or I'm noticing stress and anxiety is so much more powerful for you to reduce your stress and anxiety than if you just say, I'm stressed, I'm anxious. And you're associating yourself with that pain and that suffering. So it's observing how you are feeling rather than associating how you're feeling. It's observing. It's like, oh, I'm feeling anger in this moment as opposed to I'm angry. It's noticing, oh, I'm feeling uh, irritated. I'm feeling really irritated by my kids right now as opposed to I'm so irritated by my kids and family right now. Even if you're just inserting the words I feel in front of it is a level of self-awareness that, that, that almost like gives you a little time out from those, from those feelings. It's just stopping and observing. Rather than saying I'm angry, you're saying I'm feeling anger. Rather than saying I'm um, pissed off, I'm irritated, it's oh, I'm noticing that I'm feeling pissed off and irritated. That simple little distinction there that simple little separation that simple little addition of the words like i'm noticing that i'm feeling that i'm experiencing that will reduce your feelings of stress and anxiety will reduce your cravings to have a glass uh, ha have alcohol will reduce your um yeah your need to to seek this temporary relief with a glass of attractively packaged poison um now, uh, Matt was asking the question around alcohol. If he, if he had asked me a question about specific guidance targeted at new parents about how to <laughs> reduce your stress and anxiety that didn't involve alcohol, well, I would give probably a different answer. Uh, and we'll leave that for the relationship podcast <laughs> at, an, at a later date. But in spe specifically relating to quitting drinking, uh, there's always going to be reasons, excuses, there's always going to be kids or wives or husbands or injuries or, um, you know, disappointments or all these kind of things are going to come up and they're always going to cause us to feel something, right? It's never going to end. It's always going to be coming. And like I said before, even if we, if we you know, you have the perfect wife and the perfect children and, or the perfect husband and the perfect kids, perfect family life, there's still going to be all these other issues that are coming up. So, and it's the same methodology for dealing with family uh, issues or, or dealing with your alcohol cravings if it's triggered by family and dealing with alcohol cravings if it's triggered by something else. Um, I hope that was helpful, Matt. I like to breathe. I like to get up. I like to do something else, drink a glass of water, just do anything else other than reach for the for the glass of alcohol. Breathing, I think, is the easiest, quickest, most effective way to do it because you can sit there and you can breathe and 30 seconds later you feel completely different. <sighs> big breath in, big breath, breath out. I did this in a, in a recent episode and where I was answering another, um, another uh, listener's question. Um, and, uh, you know, not to bang on about it, but literally just moving, getting up and moving, writing something down, big glass of water, uh, and then also just disassociating yourself from the uh, anger or the sadness and just noticing that you're feeling anger or you're feeling sadness or you're feeling or you're noticing stress and anxiety. That is a super, super, super effective way of reducing those cravings and ensuring that you don't drink. Uh, so, Matt, I hope that was helpful. Uh, congratulations on having two little kids. That sounds amazing. 
Um, they're disrupting your sleep, interrupting your routines and adding an extra element of stress and balancing everything. Yeah, I feel you. Uh, I feel you. Uh, why don't I get a guest on who specializes in family and communication and, and things like that in a future episode? Would you like that? Let me know. Uh, send me a DM on Instagram at James Swanick. You can email me at james at jameswanick.com. Would you please leave a review uh, in iTunes if you're listening on iTunes? The, um, the show is available on Spotify and on iTunes. You can watch the video version of this on YouTube. Um, yeah, leaving a review actually really helps promote the show in the iTunes rankings. And that means we can get more listeners and potentially help more people with these type of things. Um, so you writing a review is you... Uh, directly helping someone else to completely transform their life and tra- heal their relationships and their health. So um, may I request that you leave a review? I would so appreciate that. I'll give you a big shout out when I see your review. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Send in more of your questions and we'll keep doing this. I'd love some feedback and I will catch you on the next one. Thank you so much for listening. I have some free stuff for you. If you go to jameswanick.com forward slash guide, I will send you my formula for reducing or quitting alcohol. If you'd like to watch the video versions of these episodes, then you can watch them at my YouTube channel, which is at James Swanick. If you'd like to send me a direct message on Instagram, you can do so at James Swanick. If you would like to try a three-day challenge, a free three-day challenge, you can go to jameswanick.com forward slash three-day challenge. If you would like to try the 30-day no alcohol challenge, you can go to 30-day no alcohol challenge. If you would like to schedule a 15-minute exploratory call with one of my coaches to see how we may be able to help you in your alcohol-free journey, you can go to jameswanick.com forward slash schedule. And my request is if indeed you enjoyed this episode or you have enjoyed the podcast, would you please go ahead and rate the show in iTunes and would you please write a review? A review might just be a sentence saying, great, listen, hey, this was fantastic. Oh, I really enjoyed this. Whenever you give a rating, whenever you write a review, it surges our podcast up in the rankings, enabling more people to see it and hear it and potentially inspiring someone out there to reduce or quit alcohol and potentially transform their life. So yes, while it does help me to get ratings and to get reviews, you will actually be directly contributing to helping someone's life by having them discover this podcast. So if you are open to inspiring others and to helping me in the process, would you please go ahead and give this episode a ranking and would you please write a review? Thank you so much for listening and I will catch you on the next one.